reason I'm here is that I'm on the way home from a three-week tour of Australia. Um, Wikimedia Australia invited me to visit the speaking four cities down there. And that's why my slides have Wikimedia Australia on them, not Wikimedia Indonesia, because I'm reusing the, the slides from the talk I gave in Australia. Uh, so I want to thank Wikimedia Australia for that opportunity. And I want to thank Wikimedia Indonesia for the opportunity to come to Jakarta to meet you and talk to you today. I'm going to answer the question, what is Wikidata? But I'm also going to then talk about a couple of other projects that I'm involved in very briefly, because I think those will be of interest, and I have the opportunity while I'm here to do so. So let's answer the question, what is Wikidata? There you are. On the home page of Wikidata in English, it says, Wikidata is part of the non-profit, multilingual, free content Wikimedia family. So I've now answered the question, you can all go home. <laughs> See, I told you the jokes were all the same. <laughs> Let's unpick that. But it's also the fastest growing. It's a very uh, rapidly expanding project. And I think it's going to become one of, if not the most important of the Foundation's projects. Although obviously Wikipedia will always have its place as an important project as well. So why do we have Wikidata and what's it for? And in order to tell you that, I need to show you a Wikipedia article. And bear in mind, like I said, this talk was written for an Australian audience, so I chose Kylie Minogue. You all know who she is, yes? Yeah. So that's a typical Wikipedia biography, uh, quite a long one and a good quality one. And down the right-hand side, we have an info box. Are you all familiar? Yes. Do you have info boxes in all the Indonesian language Wikipedia? Yes. Yeah. Good. So that's what the info box looks like. And in that, we have statements about Kylie Minogue, or whoever or whatever the subject is. Uh, which is a uh, property and the value. So we have the property that her birth name was Kylie Amino. We have the property that her birth date was the 28th of May 1968. And we have the property that she was born in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Okay. Uh, and we have that in the English Wikipedia. Oh, we also have the property that her website is Kylie.com. I'm told, I've never visited it. <laughs> But in the French language Wikipedia, we have the same properties and the same values. The language is different, you know, we write man differently in French. But it's the same information, and we have the website. We have the same thing in the Welsh language Wikipedia. Wales is a little bubbly bit on the left-hand side of England. They have their own language. We have the same information in the Welsh Wikipedia. Anybody recognise that language? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. How about this one? Well, yeah. <laughs> Arabic. Uh, Korean. Yeah. So we have the same information in many Wikipedia boxes, up to 290 Wikipedia. How many of you have done database design and created new databases? Yeah. And, and if you're doing that, would you store the same information 290 different times? No. no. <laughs> there, are, there is a technical term for doing that. In English, we call it stupid. <laughs> it's not a good way to proceed. So we recognise that we shouldn't be storing this information in lots of places. Because what happens is sometimes somebody dies. David Bowie died a few weeks ago. Well, then, and the English Wikipedia is updated straight away because when it's on the news, somewhere in the world, somebody who speaks English is listening to the news and they go and update Wikipedia. And maybe in French and German. But maybe in Indonesia it's night time and nobody hears it for 12 hours and it's 12 hours before it's updated. And maybe in Wales, uh, the very few Wikipedians who, who speak Welsh are all busy doing other things and they don't do it for a few days. And maybe some minority language with 400 speakers and only five Wikipedia editors, nobody gets around to it for weeks. So you end up with different information for the same statement being stored, and that is also stupid. So what we need is to store it once, display it many times, and when it's updated in that one place, the, the many displays will all update at once. <coughs> and that's what Wikidata was primarily intended to address. It does other things, as we'll see in a little while. But that's the primary thing. So we created an item in Wikidata about Kylie Minogue. And it looks like that. It's very easy to see that. Isn't it? <laughs> it's very long. There's lots of stuff in there. So if we just look at the top part of that, 
one screen worth, it looks like that. Okay. Not everything in Wikidata is that long. There's a lot of information about Kylie Minogue. There is very little information about other people and places. And I'm going to stand up now, and I'm going to show you how this is structured. So first of all, my settings tell, tell the software to use English in my preferences. Yeah? So I get that in English. You will get it in Indonesian, or Javanese, or Balinese, or whatever language you have chosen, if it's available in the software. A separate setting tells Wikidata to show me English material here. So that's separate to the preferences setting. And later on this morning, if you want me to, I'll show you how to change that for your languages. So what we have here is a label. Kindly me know it's a nanny, so it's a label. And that's the same in most languages, because somebody, I, I, you call me Andy Mabbit, even though you speak Indonesian, you don't have a different word for Andy Mabbit in Indonesian. But if this was the Wikidata item about cheese, it would be Kassa in German and Fromage in French, and in Indonesian it would be Keju. Keju, thank you. And different in, in Japanese and Arabic and other languages. So I've chosen to see English labels. You can choose your preferred languages. And we have a description. She's an Australian singer, recording artist, and so on. And I've chosen again to see that in English. Below that, we have statements with properties and values, just like in an info box. So the first one happens to be her sex or gender is female. And again, I'm seeing this label in English because I've set my software to show you that. Or I've told Mickey that. Her commons category is called Kaida Minogue. So if you see this in Indonesia, you will see the Indonesian word for commons category, but you'll still see <coughs> Kaida Minogue because that's the name of the category. That doesn't change in different languages. And we have the VIAF, V-I-A-F, Virtual International Authority File Identifier, which is this number. And that's an amalgamation of library catalogues from around the world. So that all libraries that have books about Kaida Minogue no, it's the same person that they're writing about. So that's a unique identifier. Unfortunately, this slide is out of date because while I was in Australia, they changed the interface on Wikidata. And all the statements that tell you things about people are still at the top. But all the statements that are identifiers are now displayed separately at the bottom. Although, I say all. Some are, and at the moment we're converting the rest. So it's taking a little while, which is why I haven't updated this slide. So if you visit this item in Wikidata, <coughs> you may see the items in a different order with the identifiers at the bottom. But everything else I'm going to tell you stays the same. Could you advance the slide for me, please? Thank you. At the top of that item, next to Kylie's label, is this identifier. Q11998. Okay. That's a unique identifier for this item and for the subject of this item, and it forms part of the web address for the item. So we don't have, like we do in Wikipedia, the name in a particular language. This is a multilingual project, so the, the URLs have to work for everybody. So they have these Q identifiers. You'll hear them referred to as Q numbers or Q labels or Q identifiers. The reason it's Q is that the software developer who wrote Wikidata's initial software had a girlfriend whose name began with Q and it would be nice to immortalise her and it was cheaper than buying her a bunch of flowers. True story. But Q doesn't mean it. It doesn't have any deep significance in terms of the data. It's just a random letter really. We also have some aliases. So if things are known by a different name, that's just for search purposes. If, if we want to say that somebody has a birth name, or a married name, or a religious name, or a formal Chinese name, we have separate properties for that. This alias is just for search purposes only. Okay? And that one is specific to English, specifically in English. Would you again please advance the slide? So I'll come and sit down in a minute, you won't be looking at <laughs> There is a tool in gadgets in Data. You all know gadgets from Wikipedia, yes, in your preferences, um, called uh, Label List. And that shows you all the labels in different languages. So here for Kylie Minogue, it's Kylie Minogue in Hungarian, it's Kylie Minogue in Gaelic, which is a Scottish language, it's Kylie Minogue in 
French, even in Indonesian, it's Kalimino. But in Hindi, in India, it's written like that. And in Hebrew, in Israel, it's written like that. So you say Kalimino, but you write it differently. And again, if this was cheese, it would be cassa and fromage and all of cheese. So those would be the labels. So you can help by putting labels on things that in Indonesia or in Javanese or in other languages that don't already have labels. So lots of things in England or things in America don't have Indonesian labels and you may wish to add them. You may wish to add English language labels to things in Indonesia that don't have an English label. So the names of small towns in Indonesia or the names of Indonesian politicians and so on. The label might only be created in Indonesia or in Javanese or another language, and you may wish to add English labels so that people in the wider world can understand your culture as well as vice versa. And here are the descriptions of Kaya Do you remember the English language such as an Australian singer? Well, in French, it's a chanteuse, in uh, Italian, a cantata. But look at all the gaps. No label in Indonesia. This, was, this slide was taken yesterday morning, so maybe somebody has already been here. No label in Japanese. So, sorry, no description in Japanese. So again, you can have descriptions in your language, and you'll see why this is important, this is my talk progressive. Or you can add English descriptions to things about things in Indonesia that you want the rest of the world to know about. So that alone is a useful way to contribute. What we actually store is 1968-05-28. We store the ISO, the International Standard Organization format of the date, or the date and time if we have that. But then we display it to me in English, to you in Indonesian or Javanese, or to other people in French or Japanese, depending on the settings again. So we handle dates very specifically. And you can see there we have one reference. And you see there's a little triangle next to that. If you click on that triangle, it expands like this. So just like in Wikipedia, we want references for each statement. We need to know the source, the citation. So this one came from the Virtual Integrated Authority file, the, the VIAP that I mentioned earlier, and we retrieve that information on the 9th of April 2014. So you can see where it came from, which is very important. And I just want to remind you that we store Kylie's Virtual International Authority File or VIA identifier. Remember that. We store that in Wikidata. We'll see why later on. Some more things about Kylie we know. We know that she received this award, the Gold Logie Award, which is like the Oscars in Australia. And we have a reference for that. This time the reference is in URL rather than the Wikidata item. But we also have two qualifiers. So this property is qualified by two other properties. And they say that she won the award at the point in time, 1988, that's obviously a year, and she got the work for Neighbours. You all know Neighbours here. It's a sort of documentary about Australian culture. Okay? So, so we qualify a statement with some information about where it came, uh, about how we know about it or what, what other information we have. And we can qualify things by saying that they've ended. So we can say John Vandenberg was the Prime Minister of Australia, but only until 2013. We can put an end time. Something I don't have a slide to show you is we can also show preferred information. So we can say the population of Jakarta is this number of people according to the government census in 2000. But it's this other number, according to, say, the CIA fact file, in 2014, which is more up to date. And we can mark one of those as the preferred, perhaps the 2014 one, because it's more up to date, and the other one we can mark as lower rank. So you can rank statements according to whether they're preferred, ordinary, or deprecated, three levels. Okay. We also record the fact that Kylie Minogue is an instance of a human. She's unique. There is one Kylie Minogue. You are all instances of human beings. You are all one-off people. You all have your own identity, your own history. Kylie Minogue has won the Centenary Medal. 
But the Centenary Medal is not an instance of a medal because lots of people have won it. It's a generic concept. So it's a subclass of the Orders, Decorations and Medals of Australia. So everything is either an instance of something or a subclass of something. So Kylie Minogue is an instance of a human being. And a human being is a subclass of a mammal, which is a subclass of an animal, which is a subclass of a living thing, which is a subclass of the universe. So everything is a subclass of the universe, or the subclass of a subclass, or the subclass of a subclass of a subclass, and so on, until it becomes an instance. To give you another example, yesterday we rode on a train around Jakarta. That was an instance of a particular type of train. But the type of train was a subclass of Indonesian trains, which was a subclass of trains of Asia, which is a subclass of trains of the world, which is a subclass of forms of transport, and so on. So all things are either an instance or a subclass of something else. And that's a very important concept when you create an item in Wikidata to make it one of those two things. If you don't, it shows up on an error report and somebody else has to go and do it. And of course we all want to be considerate neighbours. So as I said, her medal is a subclass of another set of medals and there's the other set of medals which is a subclass of another set. So you see the uh, example there illustrating my point. I should perhaps at this point mention when you can have a Wikidata item about something. So everything that is a Wikipedia page has a Wikidata item. Whether it's a, an article on Wikipedia, or a list on Wikipedia, or a template on Wikipedia, but not user pages, just the things that are actually part of the encyclopedia properly. You can also create Wikidata items for other things. So if something meets Wikipedia's notability criteria, but nobody has written the article yet, you can still create the Wikidata item. So you might want to do, you might have a list of all the mayors of Jakarta, but only half of them have Wikipedia articles, the other half haven't been done yet. But you can create all the Wikidata items at once if you want to. You can create a Wikidata item for things in list articles. So if you have an article on Wikidata that is a list of mosques in Jakarta, and some of them have Wikipedia articles and some don't, you could create a Wikidata item for each one in the list, even though some of them don't meet the notability criteria and will never have an article. Because it's in a list article, you could still create that. So uh, lists of public art in Jakarta, lists of railway stations in Jakarta, all those can become Wikidata items. Lists of the works of Mozart, this is the works of Beethoven, same thing again. So, going back to the item about, Wiki, about Kylie Minogue in Wikidata, at the bottom of that very long page that I showed you, you see something like this. All the Wikipedia articles about Kylie Minogue. So if you were around Wikipedia five years ago, we had interwikilinks in every article. So the English article said this is also available in French, and German, and Indonesian, and all the others. And the Indonesian article said this is available in English, and French, and German, and all the others. And so on and so on. And if you've got an article like the banana, which is in 150 languages, 150 versions of that data were stored. Like I said earlier, that's stupid. So instead, we now store it once in Wikidata, and all the Wikipedias transclude that information from Wikidata into the Wikipedia article when the article page is generated by the server. So that's quite an important change. But also notice, we have lots of articles about Kylie Minogue. I mean, that's just the languages from A to B, never mind all the other languages. But there is one Wikidata item. We don't have one for each language, so that's another important point. We also have items in Wiki, sorry, we also have entries in the item in Wikidata for all our sister projects. So these are all the Wikiquote pages about Kylie Minogue in different languages. And the Commons page about Kylie Minogue. And if there was something in Wikisource or Wikivoyage, that would be there as well. So the Wikidata item is the hub now that links all the other projects together, whether they're Wikipedias or other Wikimedia projects. They all link through one Wikidata item. Sorry, I, I missed something out. When I said you can create items for Wikidata, in Wikidata for things in list articles, there are other criteria for creating items in Wikidata as well. 
So if something links two items together, if you have an Indonesian poet and an Indonesian scientist who are cousins, <coughs> you can create an item for each of their parents who are siblings, and then an item for their shared grandparent in order to link the two together. So that's a legitimate reason. And we also have items for other data sets where we can usefully add information. So you could create an item for um, all the television stations in Indonesia, whether or not they're in a Wikipedia article or whether there's a list article. If we were going to use that to say who all the actors and, and news presenters worked for. So it's useful to have the station as an item so you can list the employer of a person as being that station, even though we're not going to write a Wikipedia article about the station. So quite often, just filling in gaps in Wikidata means you can create new items as well. How you decide in a particular case, sometimes it's just down to community discussion. So one day we'll say yes and one day we'll say no. Just like on Wikipedia, there are inconsistencies. But because it's a new project, we haven't really reached the level of maturity where it's easy to guess. So sometimes you need to look at them and have a discussion in the community about whether you should create a data set. Once we've got all this information in Wikidata, how do we use it? Let's have another look at the Wikipedia article, the English Wikipedia article about Kylie Minogue. At the bottom of the page, under external links, we tell you her official website and her internet movie database entry. You all know the internet movie database? Yeah, directory of films and television appearances? Yeah. Down the right hand side, as we've seen in Wikidata, we have a Wikimedia Commons category. <coughs> and we have her wiki quote entry, only the English one because it's the English Wikipedia, but we do mention it. And across the bottom we have that panel called Authority Control. Let's have a closer look at that. So in this panel, we have the VIAP identifier. You remember I have to remember that we store that. And we have all the other identifiers that qualify as Authority Control. So we have the uh, uh, German identifier, the Disney identifier, the French identifier. Here and here, wrapped around the line, we have the Australian identifiers. Now, I was told yesterday there is no Indonesian biography identifier like there are in these other countries. Maybe one day there will be. But we will include it if there is. None of that data is stored in the English Wikipedia or in any other Wikipedia. It is now stored in Wikidata, and the template in the English Wikipedia looks like that. You'll notice, this is from the Kylie Minogue article, there is no value in there, there is no actual data. It simply says, go and fetch the data from Wikidata. Now this template exists on the Indonesian Wikipedia under the name Norm Data, which is the German name for it. So somebody has imported it from the German Wikipedia and not translated the name. And it's on about 72 or 73 different Wikipedias. It's not in the Javanese Wikipedia. It's not in the Sundanese Wikipedia. So somebody needs to copy that template or import it from the English or the German Wikipedia and translate the part that is displayed to the public so that you can pull that data from Wikidata into your article. And then I have a friend who will run a bot who will apply this template to every article which is suitable, where there is information in Wikidata already. And then you need to tell your community to add it in future, whatever you call the template, in each of your languages. So when you've imported that template, if you tell me, I will ask my friend to run the bot. Okay. Just to remind you, this is also on the Kylie Minogue article, this is what I showed you a minute ago. And that information is pulled in by four templates on the English Wikipedia. You will have similar templates on some of your Wikipedias, maybe not on others, but each one of those has no values in it. It pulls the values from Wikidata. So one of those makes this appear, the little box that says Kylie has a Wikimedia Commons page. Now I'm about to show you the code for that template. Don't panic, you do not need to know how it works. <laughs> some, some of you will, because you're coders, but don't worry if you don't. It looks like that. The important thing here is <coughs> P373, property P373, because that is the property in Wikidata that holds that information. 
So we need to know the identifier, the P number, for the property. So all the items which are about subjects in Wikipedia or elsewhere have Q identifiers, but all the properties have P for property identifiers. So now on the English Wikipedia, we document that template like this. You, you all have template documentation on your Wikipedias as well, I'm sure. And down in the bottom right hand corner, we have two templates that say this template uses P373. So just by looking at the template documentation, can you tell which properties the template is using? And if we go to Wikidata and look at P373, you see there, P373, not Q. You have a label, which is multilingual, I've seen the English one. We have a multilingual description, again, I've seen the English one. We have a data type that tells you that this particular property is a string. It could be a URL, or a quantity, or a date and time, or another Wikidata item, or a mathematical formula, or one of several other types. So we define the type, but then we have properties with values. So we describe a property in the same way that we describe an item, by using other properties. One of the properties we have sometimes is called the formatting URL. So we say, take the value, replace dollar one with the value, and use this to build the URL. So for a VIAF identifier, like the one I showed you earlier, we have a VIAF URL with dollar one at the end. We replace dollar one with the actual value, and then we have the link. So when the organization that maintains those URLs changes their URL structure or their domain name, and it happened with one recently, we make one change. We don't store it in every item. We store it once and use it many times. The same principle that we set up with the to do. Okay? You all with me so far? Feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. So to take another example, the Australian Dictionary of Biography Identifier. When I took this slide, the data type was screen. We're changing the data type. So you remember I said earlier, we're changing how the identifiers appear. As part of that process, we've created a new data type called external identifier. And we're in the process of converting all of them across. So we're in a state of flux, which again is why I haven't updated this slide. But when you look at this next week, it will say data type external identifier. But then we have an instance of property, just like we have for Kylie Minerva. It's an instance of a Wikidata property for authority control for people. And we have an example. I'll show you that's a little bit lower down the page. So the example is now at the top. Edmund Barton has that identifier. So we show you how to use the property. So if you're not sure, you can go and see an example. We have a formatted URL with the dollar one in it. We have a link to the Wikidata item that describes what the property is about. In this case, the Australian Dictionary Biographer. And more properties besides. Okay? And these are just some of the properties that were created in one week, a few weeks ago. And what I wanted to show you here is the vast variety of properties. So we have an identifier for Ramsar wetland sites, an identifier for uh, Norwegian municipalities in Norway. We have the Latvian toponomic names identifier for places in Latvia. We have uh, identifiers for fashion models and for fashion photographers. We have identifiers for uh, railway accidents in a UK database of railway accidents. So we cover a very, very wide range of different types of properties and identifiers. Most of the ones that aren't identifiers, like height and nationality and place of birth and uh, engine size for automobiles and things like that, have already been created. So most of these days we're creating identifiers. And 95% of the properties are identifiers, which is why we're separating them to a separate part of the page. But if you come to us and say, we need a new property for something else, whether it's an identifier or not, we can create one. 
So if you say there is actually an Indonesian database of people, or maybe an Indonesian database of Indonesian poets that has identifiers, we will create a property for it. Uh, and I can help with that process if, if you want to know how to do it one day in the future. If you contact me, I will help you to do that. We don't do it for everything. There has to be a certain amount of data that we'll use it, and there has to be somebody who is going to do the work to populate it, at least initially. But we will consider any request, and as long as it's a sensible request, it will be done. Now, the item on Wikidata about Kylie Minogue know, that I showed you in one of my early slides was so long you couldn't read it on the screen. So we built a tool called Reasonator, and Reasonator presents the Wikidata item values in a more human readable form. So you could use Reasonator. So that's really what I'm going to tell you about Wikidata itself. I'm now going to tell you about some of the ways that we can use information from Wikidata and some of the tools that use Wikidata. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that people are using that data. So the first example is a restaurant menu. You've all seen things like this. You can see them on the web. Some restaurants now give you an iPad with the menu on rather than a piece of paper. So this is in English. And it says a cheeseburger has beef and emmental cheese in it. It says macaroni and cheese is vegetarian. It says shawarma, it, it's very difficult to really get that picture, is lamb, chicken and veal. You can all see that, and so on. But in the top left hand corner, it says select language. So I went to this and I selected French. <coughs> so now we know the cheeseburger has rien bovine. In Edmonton, apologise for my awful French pronunciation, macaroni et fromage is vegetarian. Vegetarian. Quava, which is how they say schwama, is viande viande de poulet or veau. Chicken, lamb or veal. Okay? But it's in French. You can even do it in Japanese. You can do it in many, many languages. And guess what? The website that this was written in was written by a guy who only speaks English and only has English text. Have any of you done any HTML editing? Yeah. If you have, you'll recognise this. So this is the bit about Schwama, which has lamb, chicken or veal. There is no French text, there is no Japanese text, no other languages. But for each one of these, we use the ID with the QNR for Schwama, a Q number for lamb, a Q number for chicken. And the project is called QLAM, so we attach a class to called QLAM to, to tell a little bit of JavaScript in the web page that when it encounters this, but the language is French, go here and get the label for French. So let me go back one slide. When I took this slide, which was some months ago, there was no Japanese label for T-bone steak. Now perhaps somebody's already done that. So if I did this in Indonesian or Javanese, some of it may still be in English because there is no Indonesian label. When I said at the beginning or, or earlier on, we want you to add labels in your languages to things that are already in there that have labels in English, this is why. Because if somebody is using that data in their restaurant menu page, or an app on the mobile phone, or to populate another website, and the labels are missing, it's not available in your language for your country folk to use. So adding labels to all sorts of unusual and esoteric things helps to spread knowledge of things in your language. Now I'm going to look at a tool that edits Wikidata for you. So because Wikidata has a very good API, uh, there are lots of tools that are written by other people to edit Wikidata. Some of them are hosted by the foundation on the tool server, some of them are hosted elsewhere. You can write your own if you want to. This is an incredibly powerful tool called Quick Statements. It's a bit like what John showed you with PyWikibot. You can do lots of edits very quickly. You don't need to be a coder to do this. I can do it and I can't code PyWikibot. So what this takes is tab-separated variables. 
So you can use a spreadsheet program or a database program to compile data very quickly. You can import it from other spreadsheets. You can export it from your spreadsheet as a TSV, a tab separated variable file. You cut and paste that into here and you press do it. Like it means run. Do it. Don't do what I want. And it will update existing materials <coughs> if you tell it the queue number. Or if you tell it to, it will create a new item. So if you have your database of Indonesian poets, and half of them have a queue label in your database, you can export that in a tab-separated file with your identifiers, and you, you may have the dates of birth that Wikidata doesn't have. And you can put them in here, and it will update all those items for you very quickly. If the other half of your database has poets with no Wikidata items, you can export that data and put it in here with your identifier and the fact that they were Indonesia and the fact that they were a poet, which has a Q number, so country of citizenship is Q whatever Indonesia is, occupation is Q whatever a poet is, so you have to look up those Q values, and then it will create those items for you with the relevant properties. And it will do it very fast, but only if you have permission to use it. So it's like running a bot. You have to have a flag that says you, you are able to use it. If you don't, it will do it very, very slowly. So if you start to create lots of errors, we can block you until we've sorted out the problem. Uh, and if you want to do this often, or if you want to do it for a very big data set, it's worth investing the time to learn how to use it and to get that permission, that bot flag. And if you want to do that, then I or somebody else in Wikidata will help you. If you tell us, if you tell me, I will find someone to help you, or I will help you myself. And we will get you to do a little batch with five or ten, and we'll check it, and then we'll get you to do a batch with twenty, and we'll check it, and then you get the bot permission. If you want to do it once for a smaller data set, it might be easier if you give me the data and I run it, check it and run it for you. So again, we might do that. But there are different options depending on the circumstances. But it's a very powerful tool, and it's called Quick Statements. And again, this is in the uh, material I will give you at the end with all the links. If you don't want to do something so intense and so technical, <coughs> we have this wonderful tool called the Wikidata Game. And the Wikidata Game is something you can play on a laptop or a desktop, or on a phone or a tablet. And it's called the Game because there are league tables. So if you want to compete against each other to see who does the most and gets the most right, you can do that. Or you can just do it on your own because it's a fun thing to do and a useful way to contribute to Wikidata. Now, we call it the Wikidata game, but it actually has several games, several versions. One of them is around whether or not somebody is a person. One is about their gender. Are they male or female? And one of them is about their occupation. So this is the occupation game. And first of all, when you sign up for it, it asks you what languages you want to work in. So you can tell it you want to work in Indonesian or English, or both. You can choose more than one. And it looks on Wikidata for a Q item where the ox, which is about a person, and where that person doesn't have an occupation listed, that their job is not listed. Okay. And this is the information we have about that person from Wikidata. So you can see country of citizenship, sex or gender, instance of human, and so on. And if it has a picture, it will show you the picture. It then takes the lead of the Wikipedia article in your chosen language or languages. And a computer program tries to analyse it. So in this case, it said, I think this person is a writer or a columnist. But because it's a computer program, it can't be always right, because it's doing a very difficult job. So the game is for you to check that. So you start reading. Ilana Mercer is a US-based libertarian writer. Writer. There it is. Writer. She writes a weekly column. She's a columnist. Good hit. So now I say done. That's correct. If it wasn't correct, I would say her job was not listed. So if it says, Ilana Mercer is a brain surgeon whose father was a writer, or whose mother was a columnist, 
the software would still find those job names and think it was a match, but it would be wrong, so you would think not listed because it doesn't say brain surgery. And once you're playing this game, you can get very fast, so you go, done, done, not listed, done, not sure about that one, done, not sure, at that sort of speed. And you can do that on the bus to work. Or you can do that while you're sitting in front of the television. If your partner wants to watch a film and you're not interested, but you're in love, so you want to be with your partner, while they're watching the film, you can have your tablet going, done, not done, done, not done. And, and, and you can have lots of stuff to make it very quickly and be very helpful. And you can choose which game to play. The occupation game, the gender game, the country of nationality game, and so on. There is another tool that works in a similar but different way. And this is called mix and match. It's mix and match, but in English that means mix and match. They're all done by one guy called Magnus Mans. And he's the guy who wrote the Wikimedia the Media Wiki software in his first iteration. So we, we all owe him, owe him a lot. So those are external tools. They sit on the tool server, but they're not part of the foundation of their own product. Written by volunteers to edit Wikipedia in one way, sorry, to edit Wikidata in one way or another. Let's have a look at some other tools. So Protoss is a website that looks for paintings in Wikidata, where we have an item about a painting and enables you to search that. So we're adding thousands and thousands of items to Wikidata from museum catalogues. And we'd like to get the catalogue of the art gallery here and add its images. I need to use my shadow for this because I can't reach up there. You see the URL here? E1 <laughs> equals 144. P180 is a Wikidata property that says depicts or shows. So the painting has this thing in it. And 144 means cube 144, which in this case is a dog. So if you look at those paintings, they all have dogs in. Some of them are small, some of them like the one at the top is big. And in Br British art, incidentally, or in Western art, a dog in a painting is a symbol of fidelity and loyalty. So it doesn't necessarily just mean this person had a dog. It means that this person was a very loyal and faithful person. So there's a bit of symbolism there. But you can change that URL. So you can change it to depicts lighthouses, or depicts ships, or depicts Jakarta. Or you can change the pics to what's painted by and put the cue item for the artist in. And it will do the query for you. And it will go onto Wikimedia Commons and find a thumbnail picture of each image. So if you're doing a project where you need lots of pictures with pictures of birds in or lots of pictures of trees, this will help you to find them. And this does paintings, but there is nothing to stop somebody else doing this for chemical compounds. So you can look for chemicals that have a high pH, or chemicals that are soluble in water. Or you can do it for uh, types of car. So you can find all the cars that have four doors, or all the cars that have diesel engines. And you can do that on a website like this, and present nice pictures. Of course, you can also do the query directly in Wikidata, and just get the data for your, your own app in XML or JSON. But this presents a nice interface. So if you're trying to teach children, you can do this. Or if you're doing a guide for a museum, this looks nicer than just a bit of JSON. <coughs> but the most important way that I think Wikidata will be used in, is in Wikipedia. And this is an example of that. Now, this is from the English Wikipedia. And we don't yet have community support to use this in live articles. So this is in Magnus's user space. But very soon we will start to use it. And some other language Wikipedias are using it already. So this is a mock-up of a Wikipedia article called List of Lighthouses in the Netherlands. So Magnus has written two lines of code into a Wikipedia page, <coughs> and those two lines of code say, find all the lighthouses, instance of lighthouse, whose location is within the Netherlands. So that's two Wikidata queries, P something equals Q something. And for each one of those, Build me a table with all these properties. So the properties are the Wikidata item, the Wikipedia article name, and the English Wikipedia in this case, the description in English, the name of the place in English, 
The start time and the end time, there's no values in there yet, but they're further down the code. The coordinates <coughs> location, the coordinates from the data. The street address, where you can address a, a letter to if you want to write to them. And the thumbnail image from Commons. Once he's written two lines of code and put it on that page, a bot comes along within a few hours and generates the page. And then once a day or once an hour or however often it's set, the bot comes and regenerates the page to reflect any changes. You can put the same two lines of code into the Dutch Wikipedia, the Javanese Wikipedia, the Japanese Wikipedia, and generate this. But the description will be in the local language. The uh, article name will be the local article name, if there is an article. Of course, if there isn't, there won't be. And the headings along the top of the table, which are the name, the labels of Wikidata properties, will be in the local language. So somewhere in Wikidata, there is a property, P whatever it is, called Located and Street Address. And it has this label in English. And it may have a label in French and German. But you need to make sure it has a label in Indonesian, and Javanese, and Sundanese, and your other languages. Again, for the same reason we said earlier, if you want to use this. I would imagine that the English Wikipedia already has an article called List of Lighthouses in the Netherlands. And I would imagine that the Dutch Wikipedia, and maybe the French and the German Wikipedias do. But you probably don't have an article on the List of Lighthouses in the Netherlands in Javanese and Sundanese and probably not in Welsh and languages of uh, Asia Minor and, and so on. Um, but with this, you can, just two lines of code, you can have 290 versions of the article in 290 different languages on 290 different Wikipedias. And you can do lots of these. You can do a list of lighthouses in England, a list of lighthouses in France, a list of lighthouses in Indonesia, a list of lighthouses in Japan. But you can also do list of churches, lists of mosques, lists of public art, lists of railway stations. And then you can do lists of artworks by this painter, or lists of music by Mozart or Beethoven, or an Indonesian composer that I've never heard of. And you can do that in 290 languages. So if you want a list of poems by a particular Indonesian poet in English, on the English Wikipedia, you put that information into Wikidata, you put the labels in Wikidata in English and in Indonesian in other languages. And you put two lines of code on English Wikipedia and all the other Wikipedias. And the articles are generated automatically. So instead of having a bot going around creating lots of articles, we now have a tool to create lots of list articles, but they're dynamically updated. If you add something to Wikidata, then the Wikipedia article will be updated. If you change the description in Wikidata, the description in Wikipedia will be updated. If you add a picture to Commons and tell Wikidata that the picture is now on Commons, then the picture will appear in Wikipedia in lots of languages. So all of a sudden, thousands and thousands of articles in 290 languages that never existed before, where the human editors of Wikipedia don't have the time to create those list articles. Now, for an article on Mozart's music, you need a human being to write about how beautiful the music is and, and how tragic his early death was. But to tell you what he wrote, a bot can do that from Wikidata for you. And that's very, very important, I think. And I think we'll see a lot of Wikidata being used like this. And that's why it's important that you put material into Wikidata and that you put labels in your languages onto lots of Wikidata items so they can be used elsewhere in the world. So that's Wikidata. Those are my contact details, but the very last line is the short URL which links to a page on Wikimedia Australia's wiki where there is a copy of my slides and links to the things I've told you about, to, to mix and match and the Wikidata game and quick statements and Reasonator and all the other things I've shown you, and some help pages that will tell you how to add ORCID IDs and how to record somebody's voice, and all my contact details are on that page as well. So if you just write down the last URL, and I'm sure John can circulate it later as well, then that will help you find all the other material. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'm now happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Can in Wikidata uh, two articles link to another article in another other language? Yes, in Wikidata we have all the Wikipedia articles listed. 
for the same item. And then you don't link to other Wikipedia articles, you link to other Wikidata items. I mean for the interwiki part. For the interwiki part, they're all listed at the bottom. Remember with Kylie Minogue, there was a list at the bottom of all the Wikipedia articles about Kylie Minogue in different languages. So if you go on Wikidata and have a look at an item about something you've written about that has interwiki links, you will see them all in there as well. I should say, by the way, on my slides, those were at the bottom. But if you have a wide monitor, they'll be on the right-hand side. It's a dynamic website, and it moves things around to fit your screen. So don't panic if they're in the wrong place. You haven't broken with your data. Another question? Okay, well, I'm going to be around over lunch. So if you want to ask me a question and you're too shy to ask me now, you can come and find me. You have my Twitter name and my Wikipedia username. You can ask me questions there. Or uh, John will be able to forward questions to me or, or answer them himself if, if, I, if you can't reach me. So thank you very much again for your time and attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.